Good morning, and welcome to today's episode of The Word. We are glad that you guys are here with us today. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. It is the final Sunday of the season of Epiphany as it leads us into the season of Lent. Transfiguration Sunday is the day on which we celebrate Jesus being transfigured, metamorphosized, if you will, uh, in front of Peter, James, and John. And while he's standing on the mountaintop talking with Moses and Elijah, then the voice of God, etc., 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 you'll hear those lesson, that lesson uh, read today during our time of worship uh, if you're in-house or live streaming. Also, Transfiguration Sunday is the day that marks uh, for Jesus and his uh, apostles that uh, he making a beeline for Jerusalem. It is now time for him to head towards Jerusalem for the accolades of Palm Sunday, the cries of crucify him on Monday, on uh, Good Friday, and then the rising to life again on Easter. All that said, we're going to listen to Peter, yes, one of the three men who are up on the mountainside with Jesus. We're going to listen from Peter as he shares with us his divinely inspired interpretation of that event for him. We're going to be looking at it and calling that we are formed. More on that in just a moment in today's episode of The Word. Stick around. We will be right back with you. So today we are going to be looking at Peter's accounting of that event and his interpretation of it, that event on behalf of you and I. What's, what was the purpose of said event? And I mentioned in the introduction, it's about being formed, and it is about being formed. So we're going to be looking at first Peter, excuse me, second Peter, first chapter. Start at verse 16, we're going to go through verse 21. I'll give you about a minute to grab your Bible, actually about maybe 10 seconds, <laughs> to grab your Bible, pause the video, and we'll be right back. So, 2 Peter, 2 Peter's second letter, chapter 1, starting at verse 16, which reads... For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when, we, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So Peter is saying to us, this event, this wonderful transfiguration event, this metamorphosis of Jesus from appearing to them all this time as a normal human being, now he appears to them as God human being, which he is. Jesus is a God and man combined, wonderful together. 100% God, 100% man. No, it doesn't make sense arithmetically wise. 
but it makes perfect sense God-wise. It's mm, another topic. But this appearance, this showing, actually, of who Jesus truly is, up until this point, he'd been veiled. Uh, the, the majesty, the glory, the brilliance of who Jesus is was masked, covered over slightly, until this moment in time. Then, poof, they see, Peter, James, and John, see this wonderful God. Man, God in combination. And what confirmed it for Peter was the voice. This is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Yes, there are certain aspects that Peter does not bring out of the event of transfiguration. For you to realize that, check out our gospel lesson, which is coming to you from Matthew 17. However, that's not Peter's point in bringing this up in the first place. The Peter's point in bringing this up in the first place is through that event, he began to link everything that had been written down by means of the prophets about God, about Jesus. Everything had now been confirmed, congealed, congealed, like, boom, his mind explodes, <laughs> so to speak, with everything that was there. It's like, whoa, boom, mic drop, exclamation point personified, whatever it takes to get you to understand that this is Jesus. And we are formed by him and by what the prophets revealed about him. And just to solidify, just to say, oh, by the way, this is not any cleverly designed thing that I'm coming up with. This is not coming out of my imagination. This is not coming out of my thought processes. This is divinely inspired. This, is been, this has been caused to be written down by the Holy Spirit. So in other words, we're not looking at something that somebody made up. And there's a lot of thought process in the world today about the Bible and its effectiveness, its connectedness, but mostly the challenge that, we, that people have had regarding the Bible simply is they don't think it's true. It's a bunch of far-fetched uh, dreamers writing stuff down. But Peter confirms it is not far-fetched. It is not a bunch of dreamers. It's about the reality of God causing men to write it. Let me just reread uh, the last two verses for you. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. It's not coming out of my mind. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. I mean, if there is any clearer, and there probably are, but in this case, at this time, there is nothing more clear to say the Word of God is divinely inspired by means of the Holy Spirit. And that's what forms us. That's what makes us. That's what creates us as Christians. It's the Holy Spirit who also continues to use, by means of the same word, use us and move us and shape us in order to serve on God's behalf. And there's more and more and more I can add on to this. And for the sake of brevity this morning, I, I, I'll save it for maybe another conversation. And if you want to converse about it, you know, hey, maybe answer this question. What has the Holy Spirit inspired you, by means of his inspired word, to do? Great question. Anyway, we are being formed have been formed, will are always being in formed process, and will continue to be formed into the future, made as new people by means of what God has revealed to us through the scriptures. There it is. That's the simplicity of it. 
And so that's where we're going to go with. So today we love to see you in worship, whether you're working with us on behalf of the live stream, you're going to be in-house. We are celebrating Holy Communion this morning. Uh, it is an opportunity for us to celebrate in the death of Jesus Christ with his body, his blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. More on that in another video at some point. Anyway, welcome, and we'll see you. Give us a thumbs up. If you liked our movie, share it with your friends. And uh, please don't forget to be a part of this YouTube channel and subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive notifications of the next video that comes up, the next episode of The Word, the next episode of Random Thoughts, and all other videos that we produce. So we'll see you later this morning during our time of worship. You guys have a great day. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye.